Welcome back to this video series tutorial for 3D game programming for Web Engine. Uh, in the previous video, we start covering the behaviors programming. We added the chip behavior, the chip movement, and a way to make the default camera 3D following smoothly the the player, the chip player. Uh, in this video, we will create the asteroid generation. Uh, if you if you can see here, you we only created four asteroids, but that's not enough. We want an asteroid field appear in front of the player, so you have to keep avoiding them and trying not to crash them. So to do that, the first of all we have to do is just uh, start opening Visual Studio solution. Okay, we will save the project. Here we are. The next thing we have to do is just create a new component. So we will create a new class on the project. We will, we will call it uh, Asteroid Manager and it will be a behavior. So as we learned in the previous video, we have to make it serializable. Uh, okay, that's it. Let's start programming. We will create the asteroids in the first update frame instead of the initialize method because in the editor the initialize method is executed so we try not to create entities in that method. Okay, we start implementing the update method. And we will create this field of the class. And here, this is the first frame. And here we call create asteroid. Here we will re return. And um, okay, in this method we will create a specific amount of asteroids. The total amount of asteroids will uh, store in a new property, and that property can be changed in the editor. So we will create this one here, and just making it public and uh, with the data member attribute, it will be accessible. So here we have. Uh, We iterate through every asteroid and create it. This first of all, we have to create a, a list for storing the asteroids. So we'll create here. And in this method. We want to create a, a specific asteroid, and if you remember, we have four different models of asteroids. So to try to make the asteroid some kind of randomized, we will provide the index parameter to the creating method. So we can create the the method here. So here we have the model, and depending. Of the index, if it's zero, uh, for example, it can be wave content assets models asteroid one. You can see how easy it is to navigate through the wave content classes. So for the case one is the same. And the default case is the three. So while we are creating an asteroid, we were creating randomized and different 
with different models, some of bigger, some of them are smaller. So now we are creating the, the entity. If you remember, we created some asteroid and we will try to replicate the, the, the same parameters. It's quite straightforward, so let's go to it. We create a model with the randomized model we selected before. We create a transform 3D, we create a materials map with the material we create before, assets, materials, asteroid material. We have to provide it as a as a parameter. We create it as spinner as we did before. But we won't add values right now. For example, we are not setting its position, we are not setting its rotation speed. So we will adjust these values later. We'll create a sphere collider. And the model renderer. And for now, we will set it as invisible. So back to this method, we are add to the entity manager. And into the steroid. Uh, we have to change the the routing value, we have to call the add method. Now we have a component that automatically create a bunch of asteroids. Now it's time to tell the application how to, especially when to create new asteroids, uh, to show new asteroids into our game. So for doing that, we will create an interval. So every specific kind of milliseconds, we will show a new asteroid and a rotating list. So we have to create two new variables. The first of all is just the index. And when we create the asteroid, it's zero. And next one, it's the interval, the interval time. And I, I would like to adjust that that value in the editor, so we will create a, a new property. And we make it serious table. And every frame we will we will uh, change the the amount of time who's left to create the, the next asteroid. So we we have to create another Variable on our sphere. So back to the, sorry, to the index here. So back to the update method. We just have to update the the remaining time. Okay, total seconds. Cast to float. And then, if the remaining time is lesser than zero, we will call a method called show asteroid. And then reset the, astero the, the asteroid timer. You create this new method and in this method we have to take in mind where the chip is looking at and taking that vector uh, on a third time distance and with a randomized uh, angle we will point a new asteroid with a random spinning rotation and a random position so let's back to it 
first of all we have to access the asteroid we have to make it visible then update the index and now we have to adjust the position and um, as we told before for creating the position we have to know where is looking at the the ship the player so in this class in this behavior i realized i didn't rename the the, the file <laughs> sorry we have to pass the the ship entity as a property so let's go back to it string ship entity and as we said before if we want to pass uh, an entity we have render property as entity so yeah perfect uh, in the in the delays method this time we will store the the ship entity so to do that like we did before we have to find the ship entity string you have to make it sure that the value is not null to avoid a uh, confusion we will rename it as a uh, path ship path and make this happen just when the ship path is not null. Next thing we have to do is just make sure that the the ship in every frame the ship it's not null. And if the asteroid number, the asteroid amount is zero. So perfect in the leg Let's go back to the show asteroid method where we were trying to posi to set the position of the new asteroid. Uh, so now in, in this method, the ship entity will have its transform. Next thing we have to to try to understand is that the player is in one position and we will get the forward vector of the transform 3D so we we know where the, the asteroid is looking at and with that vector we will multiply by a factor and then uh, to that uh, to that vector we will add like a randomized spread and those two parameters, the, 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 the asteroid distance and the asteroid spread, should be changed from the editor, so we have to create them. The first of all is the asteroid distance, and the second one is the asteroid spread. So back to the Chow asteroid, we start with the initial position of the new asteroid, the base position that it's initially transform the main position and this position we will add the forward vector
we can exist through the word transform. We will multiply it by this punto asteroid distance. Better call it spawn distance distance. So this position will be the the position without spread. So now to this position we will add like a random value. Uh, for doing that, WebNG has a randomizing service, a random utility service. So you we just have to call it. So we will change the X position, just calling the the serve random service. Lower bound we will just put asteroid spread minus asteroid spread and in the maximum bound upper bound we will pass just asteroid spread. For making it easier we will make it an integer instead of a float. We can live with it. The same with the Y. So now the asteroid is in the correct position. Now we have to adjust randomly the the spinner. And now we will create just like uh, min minus 100 to 100 and multiply that this value to make it like a uh, float and the same with the y and the z. So now we finish our asteroid manager. So for doing that we have just have to compile the code. Okay, let's go back to the editor and these asteroids are no longer necessary, so we can remove them. And next thing we have to do is create the asteroid manager entity just with a empty entity is enough. We rename it as a asteroid manager. And we add a component, the asteroid manager we created before. Here you can see all the different properties that are need for the behavior. The most important is the chip path. We click it. For the number of study we will get 200. The asteroid interval, maybe this value is enough. The spawn distance we will put 1000 and asteroid spread maybe 50. Um, if we click on the play to simulate button, we see all the asteroids creating, but the chip must move faster. So let's put to 200, and it's better to adjust the camera. like this So that's all for this video. In the next one we will finish the creation of behaviors and game logics with the collision detection and the game states management. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos and I hope you like it. Thank you very much.